Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you, as always, for joining me. We're going to continue our conversation from the last video about the correction of error. And let's just reassure ourselves that error is not real. It's a simple mistake which can be easily, very easily, as it turns out, corrected. So what error are we talking about? You may be wondering that, especially if you're just tuning in for the first time or it's been a while. Whatever the case may be, there is one error. Just one. It appears that there are many errors in the journey of life, here where everything appears to be happening at warp speed, and there appears to be multiplicity. There appear to be 8 billion choices or more. Really, there's one choice. There's one error. Separation. Separation is the error. There is no separation of any kind. This is why we're invited to accept the correction of error for ourselves. Here in the language of A Course in Miracles, it goes by the name of atonement. We're invited to accept atonement for ourselves i.e. the correction of the Holy Spirit, the correction of error in our mind. The error, we're separate from God. And therefore, with that being what we assume and think is the case, it's not, it's an error. But here in the error, we freak out, quite honestly, and we further divide and subdivide and categorize and subcategorize all life, parsing it out into many, many billions and trillions of component parts, space, time, segmentation, everything different from something else. When in truth, there is only perfect oneness. There is only God. We don't see it that way here in the world, which is why we're convinced that we're individual human beings. And we're convinced that this thing that's 80% water is us. We're convinced that the short shelf life of the human body is our life as the Son of God, and that is in error. So let us accept the correction. When we accept atonement, the correction of error for ourselves, central to this acceptance is the acknowledgement that the separation never occurred. We're not separate from God. We're not separate from our brother either. It is impossible, impossible, impossible. There is no separation of any kind. There never has been. There is not now. There never will be. Impossible. So we accept the correction of error, and the error happily Separation is not real. It's not real. And we know this. We all know this. You may choose not to acknowledge it, and you may turn this video off, or you may go off and not practice an instant of spirituality for the remainder of your lifetime. It's up to you. However, 
the very fact that you're here tells me one thing conclusively. You have listened to the call of our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, our inner teacher, part of our mind, the part of our mind that goes by many names here in A Course in Miracles. One of them is the voice for God. When we allow our inner teacher to correct all errors in our mind, what begins to happen for us, and it may happen very quickly, and I hope it does happen really quickly, like now for you, is we begin to see things as they really are. That's the purpose of this course, is for us to correct our perception, to do a 180, a complete 180, and see things as they are, rather than the way that we have made them and fashioned them with our multiple categorizations and divisions, subdivisions, hierarchies, where one group of people is superior to another. Please. Yeah, I invite you to let all of those separation thoughts go. They're not real. So how do we go about this as a practical matter when this feels real? I can feel this, I think right? So it appears this looks real. When we look in the mirror, we take the reflection in the mirrors, us. So what do we do? Well, we, we learn moment to moment to perceive truly, to see things as they are. Then and only then, once we have learned to see things as they are, once we do see things as they are, as in one perfect oneness, then, then and only then can we move beyond perception to what the Course refers to as knowledge, where we know God, which we do. We know God, but we need to see everything correctly first. And then the awareness, the knowledge of God dawns of itself. We're clearing the veil, so to speak. The light, God, is always there. It's all that is really there. And we have obscured our eyes, thinking we're individual self-sustaining survival units going by our name, our title, our surnames, our things like ethnic groups, complete artificial division, nation states, that's artificial. Think about it. It was a group of dudes, many of them wearing white wigs centuries ago, drawing artificial lines on a world map, defining and defending personal territory. It's made up. The entire world is made up. And we learn to perceive truly before we're awake in God. So this final step, it says here in the Course, once we learn to perceive truly, it is called knowledge. And it's awakening, enlightenment, knowing God, realizing God, which is what it's called in some spiritual traditions, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's in, in fact beyond language. It's beyond all concepts that we play with here in the world. But because we appear to be here, and it feels and looks and smells, tastes very real to us, Let's use the symbology that we appear to see and feel and taste and touch and smell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's use all of this to wake up because we can. How do we do this? We give it all over to our inner teacher and allow our inner teacher to correct all errors in our mind, to reinterpret it for us so that we may see it differently. 
to reinterpret your brother, not as a separate body, but as holy, as the Son of God, as completely sinless, we're invited to allow our inner teacher to help us so that we may see our brother's holiness instead of his separateness, his limitation. This is a limitation. But we don't have to use it that way. We can use what is inherently a separation device. I mean, there appear to be 8 billion of these, after all. We call them 8 billion people. Give this over to your inner teacher for his use, its use, her use, their use. Doesn't matter what you call your inner teacher, it's part of your mind. You could call your inner teacher Elvis if you really want to. Not a problem. Remember, reality lies beyond all names, all designations, all concepts, including language. What's going on with language is we're using these symbols that we've made up to communicate with one another. I'm using them to reach you, just as I'm using the internet to reach you right now. Who's reaching you? <laughs> Our inner teacher's reaching you. When something lands, it is certainly not Reverend Tomas Garza who's doing the talking. This is a pixelated image on your screen. So when you really viscerally feel and connect with something, it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Just know that and take comfort in that. I cannot correct errors in your mind, just as you cannot correct them in mine. Our inner teacher does that. And we would do very well to let him. We allow this. This is where our volition, our present moment choice comes into play. We allow truth to be just as it is. We accept and allow and invite the correction of our inner teacher. Because all of these errors, this included, are not real. They're not real. And it's not for us to correct our brother either. That is complete arrogance, isn't it? To think that we know best and we can notice our brother's slightest transgressions while blatantly ignoring our own. You know, take the log out of your own eye before you notice and point out the speck in your brother's. Same thing. Where we come in with this is we have a choice right now in the present moment. We could choose to see our brother's holiness instead of his body, his limitations. We could choose to look beyond the error that appears to exist solidly on the surface, look beyond that, through that, to the truth of who your brother really is, you. You, your brother is you. He's not like you. He's not similar to you. He's you. He is you. There is no separation of any kind. So look beyond the surface. Look beyond the surface to the essence. Look beyond the form to the content. We are the thought of God, the extension of God. That's what the Son of God is. Singular. We are the extension of God. Like extends like. Always. What we do here in the world, in our day-to-day -day life of bills, some of which are, are past due, maybe, right? Rent payments, mortgage payments, car payments, payments on a boat, a shopping list, email, a to-do list that never seems to go away. <laughs> you know, life. What do we do in order to realize 
experientially to prove to ourselves through our experience that this is in fact not real, that this is in fact a dream from which we're waking up. That's why we call it awakening. Yeah. So how do we do this? Forgive. We look beyond the surface level to the essence of who your brother really is. We look beyond the appearances to the essence, to the content. We forgive what appears on the screen, the surface level, his transgressions, his ridiculous post on social media, which caused us to instantly rush to judgment and condemnation, but we choose not to see the condemnation. We choose not to pay attention to the apparently outward error, and we just move beyond that. We forgive our brother, and it's forgiving him for what he did not do. Why did he not do that? Well, there is no separate other against whom any of us can ever transgress. There is only perfect oneness, remember. And the separation never occurred because there is only perfect oneness. Separation is impossible. Seeing our brother's holiness is how then we see our own. We cannot see and experience our own without seeing it in our brother. This is why forgiveness is the practical centerpiece of A Course in Miracles and the subject of many, many videos, including one here in this series recently, within the past couple of weeks. It's why it continues to come up over and over. This is how we do it. So what do you do? Anything that is not wholly joyous in your experience, anything that annoys you or really angers you, frustrates you, makes you sad, brings you down in any way, is an opportunity to forgive. So we can see here, should you choose to see it this way, that life gives us one opportunity after another to forgive and release. We release this. As we forgive, we release all of our psychodrama, which we don't need. How do we release it? We release it to our inner teacher. Our inner teacher clears all of our deep unconscious guilt in our mind. What unconscious guilt? Unconscious guilt from believing that we've separated from God. We have not. But here in the world where we cling to the ego and we cling to our supposedly precious sense of individual self, we need a remedy that uses the world's symbols for a different purpose, for healing rather than for separation. We're to accept our function of healing in time. We're to accept our function of forgiveness of the Son of God. This is how we awaken. This is how we return to our true function, which is creation in eternity. The same way God creates. We extend that because we're one after all. We don't need to actually learn how to do that. It is our natural function to create. However, and Jesus points this out very prominently here in the text, we need to learn to want to create. So in wrapping up today, I invite you what I've invited you to do before and what the Holy Spirit constantly invites each one of us to do, and that is to want the peace of God. This is why it is a workbook lesson. I want the peace of God. 
We're invited to want the peace of God and nothing else. You want to know why? There is nothing else. So let's allow it. All of this error is not real. Not in any way. So, how's that for direct? We need repetition here on the spiritual path because we're adult learners. And all this really means is that there are a lot of phenomena out there and a lot of distractions, myriad distractions. I mean, we're going to pick up our cell phones in a few minutes and we'll wind up scrolling something or other and, and you'll discover that you get carried away. That's not a problem. When you notice that you're carried away, simply bring your awareness back to your relationship with your inner teacher. Simply bring your awareness back to forgiveness. In fact, you could forgive whatever it was that you were just scrolling and the people behind it and yourself for dreaming it. I mean, it's all a forgiveness opportunity, isn't it? So you could do just that. But when you remember, just bring your awareness back. If you're going through the workbook, bring your awareness back to the idea that you're working on for the day. Bring your awareness back to forgiveness. Bring your awareness back to your relationship with your inner teacher. Just bring it back and carry on. All right, so I would love to have you join me here. If you have not joined me, you're more than welcome to subscribe. The subscription button's here in the corner of your screen. Let's go ahead and click on that arrow. A little pop-up will appear saying subscribe. And we'd love to have you. And questions and comments are more than welcome, of course. And if you've got them, please feel welcome to leave them, even if it's just to stop in and say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, as always, for joining me, and I will speak to you all very soon.